Tonight on My9 News. Yeah, we're getting pulled over, guys. We're getting pulled over. Does driving while black put you at risk? Why you got your gun out? You know, what, what we do wrong? We put local police to the test. There was nothing that appeared to be done wrong. Would an African-American driving in predominantly white towns get pulled over? If we were white, that never would have happened. My Nine News starts right now. It's the story that changed America's view of the roads. Good evening, everyone. This TV station broke the story more than two decades ago, putting the term racial profiling on the map. And we haven't stopped investigating since. Racial profiling is a fact of life. The government admitted it. And changes were made when we brought the subject to light. And now we're asking the question, are African-American drivers still at risk? Have things really changed? Unit 9's Brenda Flanagan is in the control control room right now with her undercover investigation. Brenda and Harry, we took our hidden cameras to several counties across northern New Jersey, but it's what happened in the predominantly white towns that left us wondering, does driving while black still put you at risk? Take a look and decide for yourself. Hey, we're getting stopped, guys. We're getting stopped. You're watching the scariest moment of our racial profiling investigation. A police officer actually pulls out his gun during this routine traffic stop. Why you got your gun out? We, we talk, you know, what, what do we do wrong? We spent four nights following an African-American former cop driving through towns all over northern New Jersey with our undercover cameras rolling. We really didn't target any particular police department, but according to our driver, police in three towns did seem to target Target us. Hey, we're getting stopped, guys. We're getting stopped. Police stopped test driver Terrence Jones on three out of four nights in Cliffside Park, Ridgewood, and Hohokus. Results that shocked Jones, who's a former police officer. To be stopped three times in four nights is is unbelievable. Unbelievable, perhaps, but was it profiling? And how do the three police departments explain what happened? We're going to show you all three stops and let you, the viewer, decide for yourself. Channel 9 News has investigated racial profiling for the past 20 years, when our award-winning stories uncovered profiling on the New Jersey Turnpike and in Nassau and Suffolk counties, we used hidden cameras to gather evidence. We did it again in this investigation. Press record pause to get a picture. We installed undercover cameras in two high-end SUVs, a Mercedes-Benz with New Jersey plates and a Lincoln Navigator with Illinois plates. We tested everything from brake lights to blinkers. Another former cop, Rich Rivera, helped design our test. He now works for policeabuse.com. I think the police officers that see this I uh, should know that we're not cop bashers. We're both retired police officers. If anything, we really support the job that they're doing. We know how dangerous it is. We know what they encounter on a daily basis. Terrence had strict driving instructions to follow the letter of the law down to the tiniest detail. Whenever we saw police, Terrence would drive past simply to let officers see that he's African American. Here's what happened in Cliffside Park. Terrence is driving south on Palisade Avenue. Watch as he and Rich go by a Cliffside Park police officer. All right, he looked up. Trust me, I mean, I can White guy, blonde hair. Yeah. Over in the news car, we spot him too as we drive north. Oh, here's a cop. Oh, right here. Uh, you guys just passed the cop? Terrence turns around and heads north on Palisade, passes the officer a second time. He and Rich stop at a traffic light. When they move forward, the police car swings into the oncoming lane of traffic, passes four cars, and pulls in directly behind them. He hits the lights. It's uh, 9 10 p.m. Tuesday evening. The officer walks over but goes to the passenger side of the vehicle. A few seconds later, he draws his gun and holds it at his side while talking to Rich and Terrence. He's driving by me. What's up? No, one, no one's driving by you. We, we just driving. We go and then we, we turn around. We're going we back up by the bridge. Why you got your gun out? What makes you think I got my gun out? Because I, I, I saw your hand move and, and, and you got look, it looked like a gun. Well, shoot us. Yeah. To, you know, we, we're, we're not trying to do anything, man. Nothing? No. A second police car arrives and the cop reholsters his gun. Terrence hands over license, insurance, registration, and keeps asking. Can I ask you why you pulled us over? Yeah, is this? Look, so you is stopped this. in the middle of the road and you were looking at me for a couple of minutes. 
and I don't know what's going on. We, we, we didn't, never stopped. We did not stop in the middle of the road. We didn't stop in the middle of the road. Why did you have your gun out of you? Right, like I said, the hell out of me. I never pointed my gun at you. But why did you have it out of your holster and hold it to the side? I don't know. You've seen the stop. You've seen the gun. What do you think? Was this racial profiling? We screened the tapes. Well, I think he uh, pulled us over for driving while black. And you think he got a really clear view of you? I think he got a very, very clear view of me being an African-American male behind the wheel of a very expensive Lincoln Navigator. If we were white, that, that never would have happened. And the gun? Did you see the gun? I saw it once he pulled it out. So the first thing I did was put my hands up. So this officer didn't feel threatened. I don't know what's going on in his mind. If I was in his shoes, I, I wouldn't have seen any justification for acting the way he did. In the end, Cliffside Park Police did not issue a summons. Terrence says that's typical in a profiling stop. I'm used to n either getting a warning or, or just not getting a ticket and, and the officer just walking away. So the question is, would police have pulled over a white driver for passing them twice? Different night. Now we're in Ridgewood. Rich and Terrence stop at a well-lit intersection, Prospect and Dayton. They're right behind a police car. The cop sees Terrence in her mirror. The officer goes straight, Terrence signals, and turns left. Yeah, he's definitely coming out. The police car turns and follows. Terrence doesn't get far. The officer gets Terrence's documents and explains why she stopped him. There are two lanes. One is an automatic left turn. The lane that you were in, you were not permitted to take a left turn from that lane. Our driver, unfamiliar with the area, did make an incorrect turn, making this stop legally justifiable. Terrence got a warning, but no summons. He feels he was profiled. I could see her look into her rearview mirror to look at me. Here's the last stop, Hohokus. It's after midnight and we're passing a DUI stop on a side street in Waldwick. Terrence drives by, lets police get a good look at him and then we both hop onto Route 17 South. In less than a minute, a police car swoops out of the darkness. Hey, I got one, I got one passing me up. He flies past our news car, heads straight for the Navigator and exits right behind them. At a stoplight, Terrence and Rich briefly hesitate, trying to read the right turn on red sign. Yeah, it says up until 4 o'clock. It says they're good to go, but that's when the police officer hits his lights. Yeah, we're getting pulled over, guys. We're getting pulled over. Terrence looks for a safe place to pull over. Watch this. The officer actually veers into oncoming traffic and paces the navigator. He and Terrence make eye contact. When the cars stop, the officer asks Terrence no less than four times. You drinking or anything tonight? Uh, no, sir, no. You haven't had anything to drink tonight? I don't drink alcohol. Well, you're not you might be a drunk driver. Oh, well, so no. why would you why would you no. think that? Because I'm not sure if you even drink or not. I'm smelling the alcohol. But he gives Terrence sobriety tests anyway, then lets him go. No summons issued. We viewed the tapes. <laughs> no matter what I said, he believed that I had been drinking. And why did police rush to catch up with our navigator? Pull it over in the first place. The reason I'm stopping you is yes. you got off the highway. You turn your turn signal on like you're gonna pull into somebody's driveway, and then you start to make a right hit right on red, then you stop, and then you just stop. They couldn't read the sign because it says no turn on red. Would police have pulled over a white driver for driving in a cautious manner? Terrence suspects a cop back at the Waldwick DUI stop perhaps radioed other officers to be on the lookout that he was profiled. What do you think? Hohokus Police Chief Gregory Kallenberg disagrees with Terrence, saying this traffic stop was absolutely routine. The chief says his officer was behind the vehicle on Route 17 and stopped Terrence because when the light turned green, the driver started to make a left and instead turned right. He says this department has never, ever, ever had a racial profiling complaint against any of our officers and that this officer has a spotless record. What about Ridgewood? We asked Police Chief John Ward. Would the officer have stopped him if he were white? Well, I, yes, I would hope so. And I don't want people to have a perception that they were sitting out there looking for particularly for any particular group. Chief Ward says he can't recall any profiling complaints in Ridgewood. He also says other drivers have made a wrong turn at this intersection and that pedestrians have been struck here. After we spoke, he ordered directional arrows painted on the street. 
And finally, Cliffside Park Police Chief Donald Keene issued this statement. I do not feel this case study was fairly conducted. The Cliffside Park Police Department follows all state laws and training protocols regarding traffic stops. I have reviewed the stop in question and believe the officers involved acted in accordance with their training, education, and experience. I feel confident, based on internal reviews and a lack of complaints by the public, that our department treats all motorists fairly. For years, Reverend Reginald Jackson has lobbied to end racial profiling. He welcomed our investigation. I think it points out that, uh, especially with the local police, we've not made any progress. In fact, I, I just believe it's gotten worse. Jackson says he's planning to meet with Governor Christie this month. During the gubernatorial campaign, mm -hmm. uh, when I met with him, one of the things I discussed with him was in fact the problem with racial profiling at the local police level. Did you really? And he uh, said he uh, was aware it was a problem, and that was something that needed to be addressed. Terrence Jones that. agrees. Even though I am African American, I'm American first. Now, if you're asking if local police officers get any training, the answer is yes. The Attorney General's office ordered 51,000 local police officers to complete a three-hour course aimed at stopping racial profiling. That order came about five years ago. Thanks, Brenda. Now, we have a few questions. Okay. We see the video from our cameras, but what about the police? They have cameras too, right? Yes, they absolutely do. Well. Ridgewood had cameras, their microphones weren't working. Hohokus did not have a camera in the car. Cliffside Park refused to provide anything at all. State police cars all have those dashboard cams, but those are not required for local police cars, and they're expensive. Okay, let me ask you this, Brenda. If, if you're stopped and you think you're being profiled, what do you do? Well, it's funny you ask that, because I was talking to the Ridgewood police chief, and he said that police officers follow a certain protocol. First, they want your license, registration, and your insurance card. No questions, though, about why they stopped you. Be polite, turn over the documents, keep your hands where the police can see them. There's a lot more you should know, so please check our website. Make sure you check out part two, also, of our series tomorrow night. Two drivers, one black, one white, same towns, same types of cars, but very different treatment in the eyes of the law. Why do you got your gun out? Wait till you see what our hidden cameras uncovered. He got close enough to kiss you guys. Watch Driving While Black, still at risk, tomorrow at 11 on My9 News.